greatness returns to the screen. Giant, James Dean. I guess you're about the best looking gal we've seen around here in a long time. The star who became a legend, who spoke for all the restless young as no one has before or since. Frank was uh, uh, crazy about James Dean. He was criticized a lot for writing these James Dean poems. There are quite a few of them, and he would write one, I'd say, write another one, and he would. Miss Lombard, this is a young movie actor who has just died in his Porsche Spider sports car near Paso Robles on his way to Salinas for a race. This is James Dean, Carol Lombard. I hope you will be good to him up there. Carol Lombard was a fabulous comedian and beautiful woman uh, who died tragically also uh, in an airplane crash during the war. He looked sad on the set of Giant in his horn-rimmed glasses, planned to return to the Broadway theater sometime in 1956. In New York today, it's raining. If there's love up there, I thought that you would be the one to love him. He survived by all of us, and so are you. My man don't love me. He treats me all so mean. There were evenings when we would leave the, we would leave the Cedar Bar and we would go to the Fi Spot, and then the Fi Spot was the jazz situation where everybody was involved in listening to jazz, which was a part of the, part of let's say part of the energy of that day. One of his most famous poems is the, the Day Lady Died. And it's, it just really literally tells what happened that day. The Day Lady Died. It is 12.20 in New York, a Friday. It's three days after Bastille Day, yes. It is 19.59 and I go get a shoe shine because I will get off the 419 in East Hampton at 7.15 and then go straight to dinner and I don't know the people who will feed me. Frank and Joe Lusser came out literally every weekend and uh, took the 419 and we'd meet them at the railroad station. When we got to Mike and Patsy's, uh, we had drinks and he said, uh, that we talked about Billie Holiday and, and Mike Goldberg played some of the records and Frank said very casually, oh, I wrote a poem today for Billie Holiday and then he read this poem for us. I walk up the muggy street beginning to sun and have a hamburger and a malted and buy an ugly New World writing to see what the poets in Ghana are doing these days. I go on to the bank, and Miss Stillwagon, first name Linda, I once heard, doesn't even look up my balance for once in her life. And for Mike, I just stroll into the Park Lane liquor store and ask for a bottle of Strega, and then I go back where I came from, to Sixth Avenue, and the tobacconist in the Ziegfeld Theater, and casually ask for a carton of Goloise <clears throat> and a carton of Picayunes in a New York Post with her face on it. Well, it, it was sort of like as if Marilyn Monroe died. Love is like a faucet. It turns all the on. Joe Termini, who owned the Five Spot at the time, wanted very, very much to help Billy. He knew all the musicians, and so they arranged for one night to have her come and Mal Waldron, her accompanying us, to come and play. It was thrilling, it's the only way I can describe it. It was as if she was singing to you individually. Uh, but she wasn't, she was really singing almost to herself. And what was so extraordinary and what was so shocking at the same time and in this way livid with a particular kind of beauty was that she was dying and her voice was broken. She was, her voice was so hoarse like that. And when she was whispering, she could barely talk. Frank wasn't at this table at the time, he'd gone to the John. That's why, and I remember thinking, oh God, he's gonna miss this, he's at the John and she's singing. And then of course in the poem he says how he leaned against the John door. And I am sweating a lot by now and thinking of leaning on the John door in the five spot while she whispered a song along the keyboard to Mal Waldron and everyone and I stopped breathing. Sometimes when you think 
think it's on, baby. It has turned off and gone. These are not poems that you went off for the weekend and fired yourself up with inspiration to write. They required always being in the balance of that state. And I, I believe Frank probably wrote continuously, probably wrote almost every day, if not every day. I don't think that Frank wrote for publication. A vast amount of his poems were just done and then put into a drawer somewhere, and it wasn't until much later that the vast majority of that work was published, and that wasn't until after his death. 